Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to take this this um, F12 Farmall tractor fuel pump, which is known as a Model B, and we're going to turn it into a uh, well, it'll be a lot better than it is right now. We're going to rebuild it, and I'll take you through the steps. If you want to do this at home. What you want to do is look for the number that will be stamped somewhere on this. It's usually on one of these one of these flat spots. All right. This one happens to have a tag on it. Well, I'll show you that later on after I get it all cleaned up. But anyway, first order of business, we're going to clamp this thing into a vise. Be the easiest way to work on it. Can't put it on this side because of the bowl. We clamp it in the vise. Makes it a lot easier to work on. You don't have to try to hold it in a uh, on a vi on a bench just makes it a lot easier to, to work on so let's get going we first want to we want to mark this somehow so we make sure it goes back on the exact same location the inlet and outlet are on the same orientation as it was when it came to you or when you took it off your tractor they can scribe between the top casting and the body anywhere on there it doesn't matter as long as you put it on there somewhere and then we're going to take the bowl because it's kind of tough so we'll, we'll get it loosened up and then we'll come back to you if the bowl is stuck like this one take a pair of pliers and loosen up the bale. Another way to get that off of there, if that doesn't work, just put your screwdriver right in here and pop that out. Obviously don't pry against the bowl. And that bowl will come off. Nice. Now there's a screen up in here. We'll address that when we get uh, after we get this top off. We want to take off these six screws and get it ready. After these six screws are out, take your handy dandy putty knife because this is going to be stuck. Put it in between the two pieces, in between the two castings. There's your inlet and outlet valve. You take that screw out and it that bracket that's right there, that's um, the holder, and the two two valves will just kind of pop out. Now more times than not, if it's an original Type B pump. There'll be a nut right there. Just take the nut out, separate everything. This particular one, it was rebuilt sometime, sometime in a way in the way past, and they changed it to a, a swedge type. Remove these three screws. There's two springs underneath this. And 
there's a lot of uh, a lot of crud. in that little screwdriver slot. Now I'm going to be replacing all these screws with new ones so I don't hang on to them. But the customer will get them back. And again, watch out that that doesn't happen. Here's a gasket. Here's the top of that Polaroid. Now I gotta pick up all these pieces. And I'll be right back. There's all the stuff that went flying. <coughs> Now they, they've got two different length springs. Depending on the year of the, of the engine, or the year of the vehicle, whatever it might be, what I like to do is put the, uh, the lighter of the two over the return spring. This one here is for the arm return. And this one here is for obviously for the diaphragm. Now yours might come apart differently. It's, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it, it could go either way. We want to take out these two clips. Yeah, magnetized screwdriver. There's one of them there that secures the arm, or the uh, the pin that holds the pull rod and the diaphragm assembly. And you can slide it right out. That's what the pin looks like. And the diaphragm will come right out the bottom. You get a new assembly in a kit. Now, this is just a breather, and usually there's, there's like horse hair down inside of here. It's like a filter that the filter is in there to keep oil from splatting out, and it also keeps bees out of it. I don't know if you can see right through the middle of it. Anyway, all this stuff is going to take a trip to the wash tank. Now you can check the arm, the pin that goes through here. If you have to take it out, if you, the arm moves back and forth, there's a little clip. It's kind of hard to see, but... Let's see if I can get it around. Well, anyway, that. There's a little clip right there. You pop that clip off, slide the pin out. And the arm and the links will come right out with it. Now, we're going to wash all this stuff up. There's nothing wrong with this arm. There's nothing wrong with the pin. No, no wear or anything, but you'll get a new pin and you'll get new clips. Uh, you'll get a new pin for here and the cl two clips that go on the ends. If you find that there's a problem. So let's get all this stuff all cleaned up. And uh, I'll come back to you with everything all glass beaded, clear coated, and all the surfaces will be nice and flat. Now, if your, if your valves are staked in, they don't have this screw in the center. And some of them are. 
some of them do come through just like this but they're staked in here you just kind of get in there and pop them out make note of which valve comes from which in which hole there's a little gasket that just went flying well, where I'm going to uh, I'm going to be washing this in the wash tank. I want to fill up all those holes. This is the screen I was talking about earlier along with a gasket. Boy, look at the dropsies today. So we'll be back. I'm just going to show you the assembly of one of our diaphragm assemblies. All these parts we make here, with the exception of the pull rod, which I grabbed the wrong one. Remember this was the old one. So we take the new pull rod, put the plate on, put one of our diaphragms on, another plate, paper washer, and a Bellevue. Now, before we took it apart, this was in line with the arm so we want this to go the same way then we bring it over to the swedging station and I'll smash this together I'll be right back after I do that oh yeah now that that's all done Bellevue wash is all flattened out, holds pressure against everything. It's lined up with that. Eh, it's hard to tell. Anyway, this is lined up with this so that the links will go together like that. And that should be it. This is what you're going to get in the kit diaphragm assembly. Those two springs. This is the gasket that goes over those two springs. These are two valves and the two washers. The two pins. One is for here. And the other one is for the arm if you take it out where the, the link sits down on top of that. And the four clips filter screen and the gasket, the bowl gasket. <clears throat> the only thing I didn't show in here was you'll get a new pin also. I just neglected to put it in there. So just about everything is ready to go back together. I'll show you in a second how it all looks when it's all nice and clean. Everything's nice and clean. We resurfaced all this and in here the face so we don't have any oil leaks this area in here and also nice and flat all the mating surfaces are ready and we can install the valves which will be fairly easy Take your two gaskets. It's very important that you get these gaskets in there. Make sure when you're cleaning it, you get all the old gasket out of there. This is the outlet valve and the inlet valve. Fuel's going to come in, go through the filter, go through that, and come up through here at, on its way to the diaphragm. 
clamp, screw, tighten it down. Now you can check the, make sure this valve is seating right. You should be able to suck air out of this and not blow any inside. That's the sound you want to hear. And next will be this filter screen. The gasket. The bail. And last but not least, the bowl. It's very important that you don't over tighten this bale. Now you should be able to blow air in and not check any out. If you can, give a little twist to the bale just to seat it a little better and try it again. If both of those tests work, you have no problem putting this back on. There's no reason why this pump wouldn't work now. Diaphragm. Don't forget this little clip. Put the pin through. and then snap this clip on. Just a little a little tip before you put this other clip on it's just give it a little a little squeeze just to make it hold a little tighter. I like to make it so the two little things come together. Snap it on. Check underneath. Make sure all the holes line up, which they do. The next is going to be these two parts here. Put three screws through, and it will hold that gasket. Now we want it. We want to put the blue one over the diaphragm. This tractor isn't uh, doesn't have a lot of pressure. This is where um, it pays to have long fingers. Try to pull them down even. That way you won't break this casting. And it will seal that gasket. Make sure it's you can't push that gasket in. And it's grabbed it all the way around. Remember earlier when I was taking it apart and I said this has probably been rebuilt? It says right there. Rebuilt for AC. 
and also turn in this way it says upside down it says Model B not to be confused with the 1932 Ford okay it's ready to go back together go back in our vise line up your your marks put two of the screws in get them caught opposite each other run them down about halfway don't tighten them all the way up Now we want to preload this. You can do it two ways. I kind of jumped the gun. Use a um, use a dowel or something or or a punch and push this down so that it pulls the diaphragm down inside. And while it's down there, tighten up all those screws. Once all your screws are tightened, work that arm up and down and check. Make sure that you get suction and pressure. Now we're going to put this breather in. But I'm going to take that cover off and I'm going to stuff some uh, pieces of scruffy pad inside there. Just to act as a, a, a filter. How's that? Cool, huh? This doesn't have to be... You don't need any kind of... any kind of... Um, thread sealer or anything on this. And another reason for it, for having that there, is... This type of pump doesn't use, they don't use a seal at the end of the pull rod. If they did, and this was blocked off, it would breathe through this. Otherwise it breathes through here, underneath the diaphragm. When that moves up and down, air comes in and out of this. Otherwise it would just like, kind of lock up. Well, this is the end. One thing I didn't show you was that little tag had the part number on it, 2513. That identifies this part fitting on a tractor. It also identifies this pump for if you were to get a kit for it, you would use that number, 2513. At least I hope that's what it says. The, the third digit is kind of wiped out on it. But anyway, all this needs now is a gasket and to go right back to the customer. I hope this helps if you were rebuilding this at home, in your garage. Follow all those steps that I did and you can't go wrong. If you send it to me, this is what you'll get back. New screws, you get it all tested, made sure everything is alright. And you get it clear coated. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. Subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.